And now we are going to achieve something wonderful and that is we are going to import a, an Adobe Illustrator file that contains these beautiful drawings here of from the world map. Don't worry, I have given you the links as to where to access these files. Okay, and of course these, these drawings here are part of the project files that you can easily download when you download this video tutorial. Okay. Now, Adobe Illustrator is a nice program in that it creates these vector graphics that really don't lose a resolution no matter how much you can zoom in. You see that? That, for instance, was zooming at 200%. And you can see you can zoom in for, for an eternity and none of these lines here will ever lose their quality. That's why we are working with it. Okay. And don't worry, even if you don't have Adobe Illustrator, 3D Max will still be able to bring in our file, okay? And here's how we get it into 3D Max. You can open a new version of 3D Max and you can just reset your file. And then we go to File, Import. You see that? Import. And then you have to locate where is the file that we need to import. And at the bottom here, yeah, over there, we're going to select, uh, what is it? Um, we are looking for, yeah, the second category there, Adobe Illustrator. You see that? In brackets AI. And there, of course, you are going to see the world map and then hit open. You can see, of course, now 3 Max asks us what we want to do. Well, in this case, we want to replace the entire scene and then hit OK. And we want to import the shape as a single object and then hit OK again. Aha, but doing that, of course, as you can see, you can see 3D Max, of course, brings in the drawing coming from Adobe Illustrator right in here. You see that? And of course, you can see that's the colors that they're taking at this point. And of course, we can easily change the color. So that's how we can be actually able to import a world map. You see that? Eh? Okay. And now, if we open any of the animations that we've been creating so far, Let's say, for instance, we want to work on this animation here where the tiles just come forward. Well, we can simply go to File, Import, and then we, are, we go to where we saved our Illustrator. And of course, please select AI, and then we pick the world map. Merge as single objects. There we go. There's the map, but of course, when we turn on the wireframe, it's there, but it's too small. So... What we do is select the scaling uh, op option, right click on it, the scale transform type in, and of course from here we can pump up the values as high as we can imagine. See that eh? And of course we can rotate it as well to 90 degrees and we can make it fit more or less our map there. Mm hmm okay so for instance in this case of course the tiles will start from the far part of asia and then they will tile towards of course the rest of the planet you see that but now if we try to render this right away you notice of course we do not see the outline of the earth and let me show you how to get that sorted and all this is happening because our drawing does not have depth even if we zoom close, you can see, of course, nothing is produced because our, our lines here don't have depth. To add depth to it, we need to have the extrude modifier added to it. So select the globe and then we go to the, to the modify panel. And of course, we're going to add extrude. You see that? There it is, extrude. Mm -hmm. You see that? By extruding, of course, that gives it a bit of depth. But this is too flat for the time being. So we have to increase the amount. You see? And by increasing the amount, of course, you can see how it, enab it enables us, of course, to blow things a bit out of proportion. You see that? This is how, of course, we give our objects depth. But I believe a depth of just 0 0.05. Yeah, that should be enough. Okay, that's decent enough to work with. And then we also need the floor. So just create a plane there. Yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. And then 
we're going to do a test render but first things first we need to change the colors of the materials okay starting with the tiles but to do that we're also going to change the rendering engine because mental ray is quite nice so we go we come here and we change the renderer to mental ray you can access this panel by going to rendering render yeah and then of course you click on the assign renderer and from here of course you'll pick mental ray okay and then we open up the material editor and as for the tiles it looks like let's see yeah it looks like we can just apply one particular material type to it and i think a nice matte finish will do for the tiles so click on the multi sub object material and then we're looking for the architectural materials there we go and yeah this really depends on you and I would like to give mine here a nice orange color. Let's see what happens when you preview this. Aha, you see for the first time, the world can now be rendered and the tiles as well. So that's very powerful, okay. Let me just change my dimensions here. Yeah, so that of course when I'm rendering, you guys can see what is going on. Okay, in fact, let me increase my height there yeah much better just as long as you guys can see of course what is going on there we go okay up next so basically yeah we are fine with the with this color for the tiles up next is the world of course so pick the pick the world object and then of course assign it that material now this time it has to be a nice glossy glass material for that, we are going to click on the standard button and we are looking for the arc and design material. There we go. And just turn on the transparency option. We are looking for a thin glass. So we're looking for the glass thin geometry like that. You see that, eh? Perfect. Now, if we try to do a test render with the settings as they are, you will notice yeah, it's going fast, but you see that? This is the kind of things we're trying to avoid. It's like there's noise being applied, you know, in the background of our... of our, Or not in the background, but there's like there's a noise uh, busy appearing in the material there. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn on fast interpolation, highlights only, and metal material. And then try to render again. Okay, one thing you notice, of course, is right now, the rendering is a bit quicker than what we had before. Okay, and then up next, we are going to play with the material for the floor. Let's select the floor and assign it a material. We are going to change this to an, uh, a mantle ray material. And then we need the ability to for this material to actually cast the shadows of the tiles and everything else without there being any kind of light in the scene. Now, 3D Max enables us to achieve that by using ambient occlusion. So for the surface here, click on the None button. And of course, we're looking for the ambient reflective occlusion like that. Now, do a preview or do a test render. Aha, you can see, of course, now things are definitely looking much better than what they were before. Okay. But of course, there's some things to be fixed. For instance, if we get really close here like that. Yeah, try to render that. Let's see what we get here. Uh -huh. You can see, of course, there we go. Uh -huh. We are getting some shadows from the object without there being any light because, of course, this is ambient occlusion. But the shadows are a bit, you know, they're not refined. So we need to fix that. In fact, let me create a copy so that we can see the before and after comparisons. Let's bring up the material. Now, to fix and to control the way in which the shadows just tend to spread a bit too much for our liking, it's simple. What we do is we come here and in the ambient occlusion settings in the spread values, we are going to reduce them to just 0 0.3. That way, the shadows really focus around the objects themselves. So now when we do a render again, uh -huh, you can you see that. Eh? You can of course see for yourself the difference the shadows really tend to nicely concentrate just around those regions over there. So when I, if I were to show the comparisons, this was before and this is after. You see that? Eh? 
So if you see that those ones, the shadows are looking much sharper than that. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And then there's another problem, which is if we try to render things like this, if we try to render this, you'll notice, of course, it's all looking nice, but our plane, the floor, seems, of course, we have an ending. Now, preferably, we always want to render something like this in which the background really is almost continuous for eternity, like we shouldn't be able to see the edge of the floor. To do that, 3 makes us a nice way to help us to do, achieve that. And that is found by clicking on the floor. And then under the render multipliers, you'll, you'll notice options there called scale. Now, this is what we need to adjust to achieve what we need to do so that the plane can fill up the whole screen. So we're going to push the, the scale here to 50. Now, what that means is that when 3MX renders the scene, it will take the whole scene and then multiply the plane here 50 times its original size. So if you try to render now, you see that, aha, of course now, the plane fills up the entire scene. Let me show you again what I mean by that. If you were to change the plane's color to anything else, let's say you choose that color there for the plane, and you render, Aha, you see, of course, that color does apply through everything else. Okay. All right. So even if when you're getting closer here, you see, we no longer see the edge because, of course, the object has been multiplied at least 50 times. Thanks to the settings under the scale. Okay. And then the other thing is if you want to focus on around a particular continent, well, you just use, you can just create a light. A mental ray omni light mm -hmm. and yeah just move it above the continent and then yeah increase the intensity maybe to 1.3 or so and then oh by the way before you actually render we have to turn off shadows yeah we have to, it's going to increase the number of your the amount of your rendering time and there we go yeah so now because the light is there obviously the focus of course tends to fall upon there you see and the best way to know, of course, is where is the light focusing is to drop the light further or closer or whichever way you might prefer. Okay, so it's as simple as that, really. Yeah, you see, in that case, of course, the light is there over the Indian Ocean. So it's really as easy as that. And then after we've done all that, of course, now is the part where you'll want to have a nice camera animation. To do that, you just go to the Create panel and then you select Cameras. And you are going to look for a target camera and draw it out at first like that. And then we right click, switch the views here to the camera like that. So what you are looking at now is what the camera can see. Now, we are then going to select the camera itself. And of course, move it up. See that? Mm-hmm. Depending, of course, on which angle you want to capture. So you can see, of course, how the camera can be easily moved about. Okay. You see that? Yeah? can lower it and then move it backwards even. Okay. And then we select the camera's target and drop it below okay and then what you do is of course you may want to create keyframes so first we're going to turn, turn off the angle snap toggle and then we can then create we can then turn on auto key and let's see we want things to start from here right so we're going to select the camera and its target hit select and then click on set key there uh -huh. and then move forward and then at this time of course you may want to be moved to rotate it down like that. And then perhaps you want to go down there. And you can even adjust uh, the, the way in which the lens of the camera focuses. So that will give you, of course, an animation like I'm playing back right now. Sorry, let me turn it to... Uh, let's see. Turn off real time. Yeah, we are using reverse. Hit OK. Yeah, so now this is what it will give you. Never mind the flickering, yeah? that's be just because the flow is there. 
So of course, this is what you'll end up having when the camera, of course, gently rotates around the scene. Okay. Great, isn't it? So it's, it starts there and then it goes there. And then if you were, if you were ever bothered to check for yourself what's happening now when you try to render the preview, aha, uh -huh. you can see, of course, yeah, this is what, this is what will be happening in your scene when that happens. Okay. And at this point, you can always select your plane and push up the values a bit. For instance, instead of 2000, you can enter the 100,000, as many zeros as possible. But it, that can be, of course, a bit too much. But let's just check whether 30 makes you complain. Yes, it does complain. You can see, of course, now it struggles to render parts of the object because that value is too much. Let's undo the parameters change there. Yeah, perhaps that value. We copy that. We paste it into the width as well. We just want a huge object, that's all. Okay, so you can see, of course, that's what happens at this time. All right. Okay. And then I believe we can then also open, we can also go to a uh, rendering environment and then open up the material editor. We can then copy or drag the brightness color, copy it and press, right click and paste it into the background color. See that uh, in the background environment, they should be the same. Huh? That way, we can have the comfort of reducing the size of the plane itself. It should still be big enough, but let's just check whether it solves our problem. No, that doesn't. You see that? Uh, now we have a problem there. Okay. So I'm just going to undo that and undo that. And go back to rendering, environment. Ah, don't worry. Um, just turn all these values here to zero. Yeah, we can always change the background color later on in After Effects, okay? But that is how we set up the camera view and all that. And then, if you want to render your scene, it's simple. You just go to rendering, render. And then, of course, you tell 3D Max up to where should we render. Well, it should start from somewhere there at frame uh, 721 and then of course the beginning is frame 0 so you tell it to start from 0 mm -hmm, to 761 because that's where the main it's from where the main action begins to take place okay so we select the animation range for the output well I always use high definition television resolution 720p is fine enough and then under rendering outputs, render output, click on files. And then from here, you can select wherever you want to save your file. For instance, you can just call it uh, the flipper, sorry, say the flipper animation. Okay. Now, I always like to render in PNG sequence. That way, uh, you know, it gives us more control. That way, even if the computer shuts down by mistake, you, know, you can always resume from where it left off. So, we can then call this the flipper. And then, save as type, we're going to choose PNG, like that. And then hit save. And then, of course, as you can see, the Max asks us some things. And please use RGB 24-bit and make sure you turn on alpha channel. That way we can have a background with transparency and of course we can always replace the color in After Effects and then hit OK. And then once you have done that, of course, you hit Render. And then there we go. 3D Max will now begin, of course, to render our animation for us that we can then use in After Effects. OK. So that was the process really of taking our scene from uh, Adobe Illustrator and bringing it into two. Uh, taking the world map, that is, bringing it to 3D Max and then combining the two with the tile animation. OK. If you feel it's taking a bit of, it's taking too long to render well, we can always do the following. We can reduce the size of the floor quite a bit. You can copy that, paste it there. Yeah, try and create a preview. Uh, you see that takes much shorter to render. You see that? Eh? Yeah. So and then yeah, you can just go and continue, resume the rendering again. Hopefully, of course, this one renders much quicker than the settings we had before. And remember, of course, you can always move the position of the light. 
depending of course on which object you want to shine upon so you can always move that closer you know or further away yeah it all depends on you okay now before we actually jump into after effect we need a partic to create a, a simple ring that we are going to use at pas as part of the motion graphics uh, option or tool just to spice our animation up when we use it in after effects so to do that we are first going to reset our scene file reset okay and then we go to the create panel we are looking for extended primitives and we are looking for a ring wave and draw on one out like that okay all right and let's just change its radius we just reduce it a bit to something like uh, just 98 okay and then basically the idea is just to have a ring which starts from nothing and then it's going to grow bigger and then it disappears again we could do that in after effects but trust me in 3d max it's much quicker and then we are going to give it some width so we create the width as you can see me doing but i think a value of 15 will do okay and then uh then how do we want the ring to be animated well right now you can see all it's doing is just spinning around itself like that not itself but there's like a lake sort of animation inside of it we don't need that we just want a let's see let's see what we yeah we want a cyclic growth in other words we want it to start from you see that it starts from nothing it grows and then it has to disappear okay now we only want it to be animated up to 60 frames so that means you have to come here to the time configuration and for the end time we're going to enter the 60 hit rescale time and then hit okay that way if you play this back you see that it just disappears after 60 frames okay that's what we need and then we are not happy with these uh, jagged edges there on the inside so we come here in the inner edge breakup we turn it off you see that just like that that way what we now have you see that it's just a ring which just blows up like that you see let me just preview this you see that when you see it slowly aha that's all we need okay great you see that eh? okay and then of course let's go go ahead and render this but first we have to change the dimensions of our scene let's see let's catch it when it's at the biggest size this is when it's at, at its biggest size we are going to open up the, we are going to go to rendering render for the dimensions we're going to change the width to something a bit higher like 2000 so that it can keep its resolution 2000 by 2000 okay and then right click and select show save frame okay yeah so this of course helps us to position the object right in the middle and let's zoom in of course so the object starts like that it's going to grow see that we're just positioning it of course to make sure it's right in the middle okay if we try to preview this aha you see there's a circle right in the middle let's change its color to something completely bright so the diffuse color will be completely white specular, specular color completely white and self-illumination all the way to 100 that way aha you see we have a perfect circle there of course let's render it and uh, let's see we are going to render the active time segment which is 0 to 60 frames select files and we're going to call this of course the ring mm -hmm. call it there the ring and please make sure it's a png file so that we can access its transparency png or targa will work okay make sure of course alpha channel is turned on and then hit render that of course 3 now begins to create the animation for us okay 